So let's examine photochlorination of butane. So let's begin with our butane and let's add our chlorine diatomic chlorine along with our light source. So we allow our reaction to take place and we produce the following two products. We have one chlorobutane on which we have the chloride attached to the primary carbon and we also produce a second product to chlorobutane where we have the chloride attached to our secondary carbon. Now we want to determine which one of these products is the major product and which one is the minor product and why. So let's begin with our analysis of hydrogen atoms. In other words, notice that in order for one chlorobutane to form, we must abstract a primary H atom. Likewise, in order for two chlorobutane to form, we must abstract a secondary H atom. Notice the number of H atoms, the primary H atoms, is more than the secondary H atoms. More specifically, we have one, two primary carbons, and each carbon has three H atoms, so that means we have a total of six primary H atoms. At the same time, we have one, two secondary carbons, and each secondary carbon has two H atoms, so that means we have two plus two, four secondary H atoms. Now, if this reaction was completely due to chance, since there is more primary H atoms than secondary H atoms, this, will be the, this would be the dominant product. In other words, if product formation was due strictly to chance, one chlorobutane would have a 3 to 2 or 6 to 4 statistical advantage over 2 chlorobutane. But this is not actually the case. Experimental results tell us that the percentage of products at the end is 72% 2 chlorobutane and 28% 1 chlorobutane. So even though there are more primary H atoms, this is still the major product. That means there must be some other advantage to forming this uh, 2 chlorobutane. And this advantage lies in its stability. In other words, if we examine the intermediate, the radical intermediate that leads to this product, we'll see that it's more stable than this one because of the following concept. And that's known as hyperconjugation. There is more hyperconjugation in this radical intermediate that leads to this product than this radical intermediate that leads to this product. Know that, notice that we have one H atom, two H atoms that cannot interact with this lobe. But this 2p orbital can interact with these two H atoms. At the same time, we have many more of these interactions in this molecule, in this radical intermediate, and so it's much more stable. But what exactly is the value of this advantage? So let's calculate it using the following algebraic formula. So let's say that x is the advantage of the secondary radical over our primary radical intermediate. So we have 2 over 3 multiplied by x equals 72 divided by 28. So this x is simply our advantage while the 2 over 3 or 4 to 6 is our disadvantage due to the fact that there are less of our secondary H atoms than primary H atoms equal so 72 to 28 is simply the ratio of this product form the major product to minor product so now we rearrange our equation we bring the 2 over 3 to this side and we get uh, we get x equals 72 divided by 28 multiplied by 3 divided by 2 that is 3.9 so approximately 3.9 in other words the statistical advantage of the secondary radical intermediate over the primary radical intermediate is 3.9.